Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson today. My name is Miss Brooklyn and I am going to be teaching an ELA lesson to you guys today. So let's go ahead um, and jump on into that. I'm going to share my screen with you so you guys can follow along with me and see what is going on. All right, so today we are talking about story elements. I love to talk about story elements because they are so important in our reading journey. They help us um, be able to kind of take apart stories and have a deeper understanding for stories when we read them. So we will be talking about story elements and I will talk a little bit more about that here in a couple minutes and what those are. But for now, just know that that is our topic for today. All right, moving on, we are looking at the agenda. And today our agenda is to go over our objective. First things first, our objective is just what you will be learning today, what we will complete today, kind of our goal for the day. Um, and then I will be letting you guys know some materials that will just be helpful for you if you um, would like to use them and follow along with me in this lesson. And then after that, we will go through some key terms. Those key terms are important because those are actually the, the story elements we will be talking about. And then we will read a book together and I will answer a couple of the story elements for you guys and then we will do a couple together. And then I would love for you guys to try out finding the last couple story elements on your own. And after that, we will just take a look at our objective one more time, make sure we completed it, make sure we were able to, um, achieve that goal and that will be all for the day. So that is what we have to look forward to and I am so excited. All right, so looking at our objective for the day, it says by the end of the lesson, you will be familiar with and able to identify story elements. And the standard is to recount stories, including fables and folk tales from diverse cultures and determine their central message, lesson, or moral. So that is our standard and our objective. We will check back in at the end and hopefully we have hit that objective for the day. All right, so for our materials, if you guys would like to grab a piece of paper, it can be a piece of lined paper, a piece of blank paper, whatever kind of paper you have, and then a writing utensil. I like to use markers because I think they're fun and bright, but whatever you guys have for writing utensils is completely fine. So go ahead and pause this video right here and grab those utensils and tools. Okay, awesome. So hopefully you guys were able to grab those and we are all back together now. Let's continue on. All right, so what is a story element? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen with you for you guys for just one second so I can talk to you, but what is a story element? A story element is so important um, because every story has five basic and important elements. These elements, help the story to run smoothly and help um, kind of make the story make sense to the reader. So when you read any book, you will see these five elements in the story. Um, and of course, I'll jump into what those are, but just know that those elements are there because they help the story to run smoothly, they help us to understand it better, everything will make more sense, and it's just good information to have in the story. It's what makes a great story. So, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys, and we will continue on. So we know there are five. The first of which is character or characters. In some books, there may, may only be one character, um, but, the characters are the people that the story is about. The story should have a main character as well as some supporting characters. The main character should be the one with the problem. The supporting characters add important details that make the story more interesting. So usually when you guys are reading books, you can pretty quickly identify who the main character is. Who is the book really about? 
But just because they're the main character does not mean that they're the only character in a story. So you will see other characters within the story who add important information and important details, but the story may just not be all about them. All right, moving on, we know what a character is. Perfect, now we have setting. This is another important story element. The setting is the location or maybe locations, maybe there's more than one, in which the story takes place. And not only is the setting where, where the story takes place, but it is also when the story takes place. So I've put a couple examples down here. As you can see, there's nighttime in the city, there's a school, that's a setting, and there's also a sun because that can um, signify that it's during the day. So the setting is very important because it can give us a really good idea of what is going on in the story. For example, if you are seeing a book and you see that it is taking place at night at a school, well, you know that people usually aren't at school at night. So there must be something special or different about this story because of that. Uh, and just in that way, you guys can also, um, you may be able to identify that there are multiple settings. Maybe the story starts out at the park, but then um, they're at a friend's house and then they're at school. Maybe it starts during the day and it ends at night. There can be multiple settings for the book. There can be more than one. So all of the settings that you see in a story, that's great to note as the setting. All right, now let's talk about the plot. The plot is what is happening in the story we are following. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So a plot is, is exactly what it sounds like. The plot is basically just the story. It's what's happening. When you tell someone about the story, you should be telling them what is happening in a beginning, middle, and an end format. And that is what the plot is. So I will give an example of that when we do our read aloud together, um, but the plot is just what is happening in the story. What are we following along with in the story? Awesome. The next story element is conflict. Conflict is the problem in the story that the characters need to solve. The plot is centered around this conflict. So the story is centered around this conflict and how the characters can solve this problem. So in every book, you will hear or see a conflict. And you know what? The conflict may not be between two people. In this picture here on the screen, it looks like these two are fighting over who the teddy bear belongs to, but a conflict might not be taking place between two people. It could be taking place between maybe a, a person and like themselves. So maybe they're having kind of an internal conflict. Like for example, um, one conflict could be in a book if a kid did not make a baseball team. He could be feeling sad with himself and that is his problem. But sometimes the conflict is between uh, more than one person. And so keep your eyes out for conflicts in all different forms. All right, moving on. The next story element is resolution. The resolution is how the conflict or problem is solved. At the end of the story, we should find a resolution to all conflict that is happening, and it should match the tone of the rest of the story. So what this means is that at the, prob at the end of the book, the problem should be solved in some way, even if it's not, you know, the way maybe you wanted it to end, or maybe, um, maybe it's not, you know, the most ideal ending, but it should be solved in some way and it should match with the story. So it should have something to do with the rest of the story so that it makes sense. Because if you have this awesome story with a great plot and an interesting conflict, but then the resolution is confusing, that is just really confusing for um, the readers and it doesn't make sense. So the resolution is how the conflict can be solved 
in a way that makes sense to the readers and matches kind of what's happening in the rest of the story. All right. So now that we have gone over those five elements, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just talk about them one more time. I just want to make sure you get these important elements in your head. So first we have character. Character is who is in the story. Next, we have setting. Setting is where or when the story takes place. Then we have the plot. Remember, that is the story we are following. It is the beginning, the middle, and the end all together. So we have the plot. And then we have our conflict. The conflict is the problem we are following. What is wrong? What needs to be solved in this story? And then finally, we have our resolution. The resolution is how the conflict or the problem is um, solved at the end, and we should find resolution for all conflicts that are happening and that makes sense with the rest of the story. So those are our five um, story elements that you will find in every story and that are so, so important. And now I would like to read to you guys um, just a little read aloud, and we will go through and answer these story elements together. So this book is called The Rainbow Fish. Maybe you guys have read it before, maybe not, but I'm excited to read it together. All right, The Rainbow Fish. A long way out in the deep blue sea, there lived a fish. Not just an ordinary fish, but the most beautiful fish in the entire ocean. His scales were every shade of blue and green and purple with sparkling silver scales among them. Look at how beautiful this fish is. The other fish were amazed at his beauty. They called him Rainbow Fish. Come on, Rainbow Fish, they would call. Come and play with us. But the Rainbow Fish would just glide past proud and silent, letting his scales shimmer. Wow, so beautiful. One day, a little blue fish followed after him. Rainbow fish, he called, wait for me. Please give me one of your shiny scales. They are so wonderful and you have so many. You want me to give you one of my special scales? Who do you think you are? cried the rainbow fish. Get away from me. Shocked, the little blue fish swam away. He was so upset. He told all his friends what happened. From then on, no one would have anything to do with the rainbow fish. They turned away when he swam by. What good were the dazzling, shimmering scales with no one to admire them? Now he was the loneliest fish in the entire ocean. One day, he poured out his troubles to the starfish. I really am beautiful. Why doesn't anyone like me? I can't answer that for you, said the starfish. But if you go beyond the coral reef to a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. The rainbow fish found a dark cave. It was very dark inside and he couldn't see anything. Then suddenly two eyes caught him in their glare and the octopus emerged from the darkness. I have been waiting for you, said the octopus with a deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. I can't, the rainbow fish started to say, but the octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales. Never, how could I ever be happy without them? Suddenly, he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish wavered. Only one very, very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one. 
Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you very much, the little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth with his new scale glittering in the water. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scale flashing, so it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right, and the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. So you can see he's giving away his scales to the other fish. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possessions had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come and play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish, and happy as a splash, he swam off to join his friends. The end, so you can see now at the end, he only has one scale left, one of his prized scales left. So when we read that book, I hope that you guys were looking out for some of the different story elements that we are practicing and that we have practiced. Um, and that is what I hope you guys were listening for. Now I am actually going to get a piece of paper I'm just going to grab a lined piece of paper right here and I'm going to get a marker and I am just going to write down the name of our book. So I am going to write The Rainbow Fish, so I know, and I am going to make note of all of the story elements. So The Rainbow Fish. Awesome. Now that we have the title up there, hopefully you guys can see that. Great. Okay, first I am going to start and I will do this one for you. First, um, I am going to talk about the setting. And the setting is very simple. The setting was in the sea or the ocean. So I'm just going to write ocean. Um, that was really the only setting that or it's the most important. If you wanted to add more detail, you could also write the cave, because um, at one point they were in a little cave. You could also write the open sea, whatever you want to write. I'm going to write the ocean. We obviously can't tell the time of day, so no big deal on that. Um, I think the ocean is a, just a nice way to note where they were. So now that I have the setting, let's talk about character. I'm sorry, characters. So obviously the main character we had in that book, if you wanna shout it out if you know it, go ahead. The Rainbow Fish. The Rainbow Fish was our main character. That was who the book was about. The Rainbow Fish was the one who was facing the conflict, right? Um, the Rainbow Fish was the one who was trying to solve his problem. So we have the rainbow fish, and of course that's the most important character to note. If you want to write some other um, characters, I'm gonna write blue fish, because the blue fish came and tried twice to get those um, beautiful scales, and then I'm going to write octopus, and I'm going to write starfish. Uh, again, these are, this is more than enough detail here. You don't need to write every single character. These are just the ones that I wanted to write because I remembered all of these characters from the uh, book. As long as you have the main character, that is the most important thing. All right, so now that we have gone over setting and characters, um, we are going to look at the plot. So. I'm going to grab a new color of marker just for fun. 
and write about the plot. Now remember, the plot has a beginning, middle, and end. So just as a short little summary for this plot, I am going to write out um, what happened in the beginning. So um, I'm gonna say rainbow fish. Loved his scales and did not want to share. Okay, so that was in our beginning, right? He loved them, did not want to share. But then in our middle, um, I'm going to say a wise octopus encourages him to share so he does. I'm going to say, so you can see what I've already said here. I've talked about our beginning. It says, rainbow fish loved his scales and did not want to share. A wise octopus encourages him to share, so he does. Rainbow fish um, felt happy sharing and made many new friends. All right, so this is a great summary of the beginning, the middle, and the end. This is just a little bit about the story that we were following. Um, of course, it's not every detail, but it doesn't need to be every detail. It just needs to be, um, kind of a little bit of a summary here. So this was our plot. Now let's take a look at my screen. I'm gonna share it with you. Okay, so now that we have together done the, um, now that we have gone over the setting, the characters, and the plot together, I would love for you guys to go ahead and pause this video and find the conflict and the resolution. Okay, so hopefully you guys found the conflict and the resolution and you feel good about it. Let's go over it together. Okay, so we have the setting is in the ocean. We have the characters, the plot. Let's talk about the conflict. So the conflict, and hopefully you guys have similar answers if you don't. The conflict was that rainbow fish did not want to share his scales, right? And we know that because in the very beginning when the blue fish asks him, he says no. And he was upset when the blue fish asked him that because he felt like the scales were what made him beautiful and different. And so the problem was he did not want to share his scales and that made the other fish sad. So that is our conflict. Hopefully you guys had that or something close to that. So now let's talk about our resolution. So our resolution for this story, this is how we solved the problem. Um, so as you know, the rainbow fish did not want to give away his scales, but when he finally did, what happened? He was so happy because everyone around him was beautiful like him and he had so many new friends and he realized that having friends was more important than being beautiful. So our resolution is that rainbow fish gave away some 
of his scales and made new friends. So to me, that is what the resolution was because as soon as he started giving away his scales, he made so many friends and realized how great it was to have those friends and how great it is to um, have people to play with, even if he was missing some of his scales, even if some of his scales were gone, he realized that he would rather have those friends and rather share his beauty than be alone. Um, so this is what these story elements are, the five story elements, just one more time. They are setting, characters, plot, conflict, and resolution. So hopefully you guys have those story elements uh, memorized. And again, these story elements, you can find them in every story. Um, in any story you're reading, you will be able to find these elements and identify them. So we are quickly going to go over our objective for the day and then we will be all finished. So our objective was by the end of the lesson, you will be familiar with and able to identify story elements. Do you feel like we reached that objective? I definitely do. I feel like I have a better understanding of story elements and I love that we were able to unpack those together in the story of the rainbow fish. All right, that is it for me today. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves and I know I have. Thank you for reading The Rainbow Fish with me and talking about some story elements. I hope you guys use these in your reading journey and have an awesome rest of your day. Bye-bye.